Louvado seja o nome do Senhor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. The brethren who are watching us online and the brethren from Houston and the remaining. Let us stand up in reverence to reading the Word of God, which is located in Exodus. Exodus 12. Exodus 12 from verse 1. Exodus 12 from verse 1. Exodus. Right at the beginning of the Bible. In a day like this, we can only speak about this topic. There's no other topic. Now, the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of your year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, Every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons, according to each man's need. You shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, you may take it from the sheep or, or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in uh, twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood on the put, put on the two doorposts and on the linen of the houses where they eat eating then they shall eat the flesh on the night roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it now uh, verse 10 you shall let none of it remain until morning and thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist your sandals on your feet and you, your staff in your hand, so you shall eat it, and, and uh, in haste, it is the Lord's uh, Passover. Today, it is a day in, in which the Christian world celebrates uh, the Passover. But tonight, we're going to speak about two very important topics here that we read that the Lord, he gave to Moses an instruction not only for a single person, but the Lord gave an instruction for whom? For the, for the families, right? And look, but so the whole congregation of Israel to the tenth of this month, they shall take a lamb, but the family is small, so this instruction was an instruction that was given by the Lord specifically to the families. And we will also speak a little bit about the Passover, right? Because this day, day is we celebrate Passover. But why did the Lord here he instructs Moses regarding the family? because the family was um, something that was established by God. It's God's will. Man to get married to a woman and build a family. It was not Adam who decided that he wanted to have a wife. No. No, God, when he saw Adam and he saw that he was lonely, God instituted there the family. It's not good for men to remain alone. And this is God's will. A family is blessed by God. 
because God has an invested interest on the family. The Lord wants the family to grow. And why is that? Because a man, when he's alone, he's lost. Man needs a wife in order to share his difficulties and share what he's going through in order to have a helper. That's why the Lord established a family. And many times, when you are alone, it gets harder. But now you have a wife, have the children, and then you have something to do. A difficulty arises, and now you have help. It's no longer a single person, a two, three, four, or five, depending on the size of the family. And there you're going to have a support, you have an embrace, you have a cooperation, you have, you have a word from someone. If you are in the hospital, maybe there will be someone that will take care of you. Someone in the hospital without any family. That's what people usually say. If you are sick in the hospital, you have to have somebody that owns you. If you don't have somebody in the hospital to a family, you can can expect uh, blood tests and this and that. When I was in the hospital, they began to do blood tests 10 o'clock and then midnight and 2 in the morning, and then 4 o'clock in the morning. And, hey, wait a second. You're going to take all my blood or I'm going to leave something left? No, oh, because the department made a mistake and put it wrong. Oh, oh, now I'm here in a, that difficult situation, losing blood. Four times in less than eight hours. I never saw anything like that. Because the woman made a mistake, was it the department? Because maybe they changed something? But that's how it is. You know, when you're sick in the hospital, if there's no someone to care for you, uh, they will do whatever they want. They will push you back and forth. A man alone is it's like this. He's lost. And there was uh, Adam and Eve in the garden. And in the paradise, everything was fine. They had fellowship with the Lord every day. The Lord would come to speak with them. And everything was wonderful. Imagine, in the garden, the paradise, Without any headache, nothing, until when they decided to hear, to listen to a lie. Isn't that true? The serpent went there, said a lie, and Eve believed, and then Adam went after her. And when they lost fellowship with the Lord, when the fellowship with the Lord was broken because of a lie, what happens? They were they were expelled from the paradise. And that's what the Bible says. In the moment in which they heard the voice of the serpent, the moment in which they doubted the voice of the Lord, in the moment into in which disobedience and sin entered, they were taken away from the paradise from paradise. And when then when they are expelled from paradise, then the result comes right after. And what was the result? They lost two children. Two children. Cain killed his brother. Cain, he killed Abel. And now Cain, he goes away. Now imagine. All of a sudden, losing two children. A brother kills the other, and the other now has to go away. Now, I, I, I try to understand the pain of this loss. I, I keep trying to understand what went through the mind of Adam and Eve when they saw the result of the moment in which they have chosen to, to follow their own 
thoughts and being expelled from the paradise because of their disobedience, and now they begin to harvest. The loss of a son must be horrible in every aspect, even spiritually speaking. You raise a child in God's presence, you pray for them, you fast for them, you go to early dawn services for them, you set moments aside of, of your time to dedicate to them, you help them to have an experience with the Lord, and then the enemy of our souls comes and does that devastation. The enemy comes and says, the enemy comes and speaks what does not that he should not have said, should not have spoken. It is terrible. When man begins to ca to cancel God's voice, and our man begins to give worth what is from the enemy of our souls. It must be a pain that is just inexpressible when you lose someone. Why is that? Because the intention of the enemy of our souls, the an intention of the enemy is not to destroy a person. His intention of the enemy is to destroy the family, to destroy what was God's will. The intention of the enemy is to destroy God's project. The intention of the enemy is to undo God's will and God, what God had done. That's why he invests on the family. He actually invests against the family. That's why he makes an investment to destroy your marriage. That's why he makes an investment to destroy your child and take uh, he or her, him or her from the presence of the Lord. Because he knows that if the home is uh, fragile and it's broken, it's easier for him to be victorious. That's why the enemy casts doubts and arguments. He casts questionings and words that go against the Word of God because he doesn't want to destroy only the husband, wife, or the son, for son or daughter, first, second, son or daughter. No, he wants to destroy the entire family. Then death comes. Man outside of the paradise, then death comes. Then the consequence comes. That's why, my brother and sister, if you want to have a life of victories in the presence of the Lord, if you want to harvest, fruit for an eternal life, if you want to have a life that is blessed by God, raise a family inside of the paradise. Raise your family inside of God's garden. Raise a family inside of the presence of the Lord. Raise a family in fellowship with the Lord. Raise your family in fellowship with the Lord. Raise a family underneath God's hands. Do not hear the voice of the enemy. Bring your family to have an experience with the Lord inside of what is God's house, inside of this spiritual environment. Fight for this. Because when you are in God's blessing, when you are under the caring hands of God, you have everything that you need. And now, the Lord now, the enemy, begins to make an investment, a greater investment, destroying families, destroying the intimacy between man and God. The enemy rises up, always rising up against what is God's will. And now we see here, look, when the Lord calls Moses and he gives an instruction for the nation of Israel, for the families especially. The Lord establishes here the Passover. God establishes here the moment in which Israel would go out of Egypt and slavery, the imprisonment 
on the dependency of Pharaoh, which represents the world, which represents the enemy of our souls, the one who is enslaving men, the one who's leading men to do absurd things, unnecessary things, things that go against what everything that is God's will. Because Israel was God's people. The Hebrew people was God's people. They were the chosen people of God. Now God raises Pharaoh to massacre people and to humiliate people and to destroy once again what God has done. And God once again shows here to Moses, Moses, look, something terrible is going to happen in Egypt. A certain day, an angel of death is going to pass by and every firstborn, every first son will die. But look, instruct my people so that on that specific day, they, would, they pick up a lamb, a one-year-old lamb, and live with this lamb for a certain number of days. And afterwards, this little lamb should be sacrificed and it should be uh, uh, burned on fire and cooked on fire and should serve as food for the entire family but they have to eat everything that is cooked from the head all the way to the entrails the organs everything nothing should be left out Whatever is, is left, just burn it on fire. So my brethren, we see here God's project being established for men. Passover for us is exactly this. Because she is here, he represents this lamb. Jesus, he is the eternal lamb of God that came to save men. That came to cause men to live get out of, God, of Pharaoh's hands and it caused men to pass from a life of slavery into a, an eternal life in God's presence. Because once again, God has a project for the family. Once again, God has for men what is something that was created, that was made, that was presented to men there in heaven. And for this, man needs to have an experience with the Lamb. For this, man has to have an experience with Jesus. For this, man needs to have an experience with what is eternal. Because death comes. And truly, it, came, uh, it happened according to what Jesus had promised. The judgment of death came upon Israel. And there was death on both sides. Yes or no? Yes. There was death for the Egyptians as well as for the Hebrews. Isn't it true? Yes. But something happens which was a mystery. Whatever they had sacrificed, the lamb, this death served as life to the Hebrew people. The death of the lamb and when its blood was placed on the on the post of the door, it served as salvation for the Hebrew people. So on the other side, when they did not have this revelation, when where they didn't have this instruction from the Lord, death came. And with death came the crying, came the defeat, came the harm, came the crying, came the lament, lamentations. Because whatever the family, the house that did not have this, death came to stay. But where the Hebrew people was, where they were there offering a service to the Lord, where they were offering a service to the Lord, because that instruction, all of it, had, uh, I'm not saying a ritual, it's a, a, a specific way of doing, this was a service to the Lord. And here Moses says, when your children ask, what kind of service is this? Then you explain. 
tell them the experience of how it is the service to the Lord. This has a joy. The service where man goes out blessed by God. But it was necessary for you to live with the lamb. You had to have this contact with the little lamb. The family, the children needed to be with the lamb for 14 days. Nothing could have done before this. And you know, my brethren, because whatever the lamb, the angel of death would pass by, if they did not have this, that experience, if they did not follow that instruction from the Lord, the angel would pass by and death would happen in that family. And now we have an instruction from the part of the Lord. Once again, if you want to have a family that is blessed by God, if you want to have a family that is going to, all of it, have their names written in the book of life, each component of this life, if you want to see the husband, the wife in heaven, you need to do what God has instructed. It is a simple instruction. But many times you don't see in homes the presence of the Lamb. The presence of the Lamb there, walking, having contact with the children, having contact with the marriage, having contact with the couple and with the family. And Jesus is this Lamb. Jesus needs to see in us this willingness, open heart, the homes open so that we may enter and make dwelling because Jesus needs to be part of this home. He needs to be part of this, this marriage and part of this family, a home where there is, n there is no, the, where they don't have the presence of the Lamb and it's an easy target for the angel of death and it's easy target for the enemy and that's what is happening in the homes. In the same way as uh, that Adam and Eve was, they were left from at the Garden of Eden, Eden, they lost a blessing. And many times today, we lose our blessing because we exchange the lamb for anything else. You can see everything and watch everything at home. We can see TV, Nintendo, and PlayStation or anything. But many times, you lose the presence of the lamb. Oh, but I give everything to my family. You don't give everything. Because everything that a family needs is the presence of the Lamb. O que o pai e a mãe pode dar para o filho é isso. Tudo, tudo é isso. É apresentar Jesus. It's to present Jesus. To present the Word of God. It's to present the resource of grace to present to the children, to the couple, what comes from eternity. The grace of God is enough for us. And why is that? Because the enemy, when he passes by us, passes by the home, he will pass by. Don't think that because, don't think that you are protected from an attack, you are protected from, a, uh, from an enemy for, to pass by a house. No. We are all targets of the enemy. You know why? Because one day we accepted Jesus as our Savior. One day God placed us on paradise. One day God placed us uh, under the, His protecting hands. So then the enemy wants to attack most. He wants to attack the, the church, and the homes that they are in God's presence because he knows that if he makes an investment there, he ent if he enters, he will what is he going to do? He's going to break God's will. That's why, my brethren, bring a family, bring a children to have an experience with the Lord. Bring a children to offer a service of adoration to the Lord, not only in church, but also at home. Lead the children to have an experience with the Lamb, to live with the Lamb, you know, pet their Lamb, and play with the Lamb. They play with everything. Bring a child to give worth to what you are handing down to him. It is our duty, especially the duty of the parents. Today, we spoke with the, about the parents 
talk to the parents about a couple of devices and uh, give a, a direction to us. And here, once again, we see the concern of the Lord in the raising of the family, in the preservation of the family. What does the family need to have in order to be preserved, in order to get out of this world? It is the presence of the Lamb, eating of the Lamb uh, holy, as a whole, accepting what comes from eternity. You cannot choose, oh, you're going to pray, or you, if you pray, you don't have to fast. If you read the Word, you don't need to do anything else. No. Show, present, and share with your family what you are living, your experience. Don't let go of this. Do not give up on this. My brethren, we are living a moment in which Passover of the Lord it represents everything for us, all of this for us. Because, in fact, Jesus died as the eternal Lamb of God. John the Baptist, when he looked and he said, Here is the Lamb of God that takes the sin away from the world. Jesus truly died for us. But on the third day, he resurrected. And that's our Passover. Jesus he is alive. Jesus was not buried. Jesus is not lost. Jesus is not defeated. Jesus was not. He is alive. He resurrected. On the third day, he resurrected. So in other words, you as well, we, you can overcome death because you are in Jesus. Because you have a lamp inside of your heart. Because you have a lamp of God. You have Jesus in your life. Do not play with this. Don't do like others do. Oh, Passover for us is this and that. The enemy, to this day, he tries to obfuscate the true Passover, taking away the lamb and putting another animal there to confuse. We're not going to enter into this that detail because it's not necessary because we know truly what Passover is. This is the Passover of the Lord, and the Passover for us is this. Is Jesus alive? Is Jesus uh, victorious? Is the one who is at the right hand of the Father, who, the one who is our attorney, the one who is interceding for us? Jesus is everything that we need. He's the one who is leading us to acquire an eternity in God's presence. This is the Passover of the Lord. This is the Passover that we need to give worth to. And this is what we need to bring into our families. The presence of Jesus in our homes. Amen. May the Lord bless us. Let's sing a song.
Lord to God. Let's stand up, my brethren. The Lord was showing in a, in a few, few spiritual gifts. And, and on this specific gift, the Lord was showing the situation of a woman. She has her life, and she cares for her own life. She has her own selfish interests. But tonight, the Lord is presenting to her a garden where on this garden she would find a red rose. And this red rose is very special. And she she kept this rose. She was amazed in seeing this red rose and she quickly would take possession and she placed that inside of her house. She would present this rose and she would bring this rose to her family, to her home. This red rose is, speaks about the Lord Jesus. Red the color rose, a uh, rose of Saron. The red rose is, is, why is that? Because the blood of Jesus shed on the cross. And when his blood was shed, he gave there his life for us. And he overcame death for us. The any greatest enemy of man is death. But Jesus went there. He shed his blood. He gave himself as an eternal lamb of God, overcoming death, so that today we could also have victory upon de against death. Not physical death, but the eternal death. Because in Jesus you can acquire your eternal life in God's presence. The Lord was also giving a couple of uh, other spiritual gifts. Let's have a word of glorification as I look for the other gifts. Lord, we praise you because you change our life. We have an understanding of what it is, eternal Passover. We have an understanding of what is salvation. We have an understanding that you will return. This is the most precious thing that man can have. We praise your name for this choice, for this, sacri this perfect sacrifice, for this true love. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Glory to Jesus. Let's go. The Lord was also showing. To all of us who are here in the house of the Lord, we have been brought by God was pleasing to the Lord to bring us here. You came here because God allowed you to come. We do not know what brought you here, the reason why you came here, but all of this is something that we are interested in because we, what we want the most is that you have a closer relationship with God. Maybe you came here in a trial and sadness or defeat or even with everything right a victorious life. Glory to God. But what is important is one thing. We all want to go to heaven. And you entered here because God brought you so that you could hear God's voice. Not, all, not the voice of man or man's experience, but to hear the following. Look, allow Jesus to live in your heart. I'll bring Jesus uh, carry Jesus so that you can have an eternal life. Accept what Jesus gave to us, which is salvation in Him. Man will only go to heaven if he has a lamb inside of his house. So, the mark of the cross, the sign of the blood. But the lamb is out of your home. The one who died in our place. The Lord also has shown another spiritual gift, a man who was wounded it comes from a life of trial and battles, lost battles, which is bad, right? But the Lord has, to this day, preserved his life through a miracle. But tonight, during the service, the Lord, he has received from the Lord something that he needed was a food for his soul. Contact with the church, the prayer of the children, the, the songs of praise. Song that he heard, songs that he heard, all of this fed his soul. And that's what we need. We need our, our souls 
need to be close, closer to God. A physical, many times not, but the soul needs to be closer to God because there is a cry from our soul. And if we have come to here tonight because our souls, they are crying out to meet with the Savior, our soul cries and please to see Jesus. And if you came here, it was because God provided for you this moment so that you can have yet another moment in His presence. Let us pray, bring the service to a close. And if you need an assistance or prayer, we are making ourselves available to you. Lord God, receive, Lord, once again, our glorification to you. This is our service, Lord, our service to you where the most important was the center of our service is the presence of the Lord Jesus. That's why we want to glorify the Lord because by faith we can feel the angels of the Lord walking amongst us, ministering on our behalf. By faith we can feel the touching of the Holy Spirit and by faith we can see Jesus, the one who is on the right hand side of the Father the one who is ready to return to take his the faithful church. Lord, we praise you for our opportunity of once again being in your house, glorifying your name. Receive those moments and give us a week of victories in your presence. As I pray that we say, in the, already thankful in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say that a wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit may be proud upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Everyone may be seated. We are praying for our youth this month. This is a month of the youth so that the Lord may give a blessing to their sentimental lives, their academic and professional life, their familial life. May the Lord help our youth to overcome, to be victorious in their battles. We also be praying for the seminar we, that we are going to have in Boston this coming Sunday. When I said here that I it was I was I was doing the pandemic. There was no one with me. Nobody could enter in the hospital because of the pandemic. She was forbidden from entering. I have somebody who's, who owns me, right? Thank to God. Somebody that cares for me. The following day, she found a way to enter into the hospital. I don't know who she bribed, but she was able to enter into the hospital. But when I woke up, she was there right beside me. So my experience was a bad experience because she was unable to be with me. But on the other opportunities, when I ate uh, <laughs> uh, fruit uh, caused me to get sick. She was there. <coughs> when I went to the hospital, she was already waiting for me there just to set everything straight. This experience that I shared, it was not very clear, right? Every time that I go to the hospital, she brings me there. She, If she doesn't uh, not take... If I, she doesn't carry me there. I don't want to go. I hate hospital. I hate to injection. Uh, I'm, a, I'm sorry for the, the nurses and doctors here. The hospital and people, it doesn't work with me. If it's of the Lord.